a convoluted analogy. I don't like the silent disco, but the silent disco gives us a pretty good analogy for what dynamic audio is and why it matters. Yeah. Dynamic audio is personalized creative for each individual based on their behavior, based on their interests, based on things that we can understand through targeting. And it matters because people are increasingly listening in a different way than they have historically. Historically, broadcast, very radio oriented. Um, today, it's been referred to as the earbud era. We have Pandora in the US to thank for this phrase. The earbud era is everyone who came here today on their commute listening to headphones, listening to podcasts or audiobooks, streaming music, digital radio, curating their own listening experience and increasingly difficult to reach with visual media. The phrase you'll often hear bandied about is you can, you can close your eyes but you can't close your ears. So this is why dynamic matters. And to understand how dynamic works, it might be best to show you a little video in the studio when it's being recorded. Here in the ticket machine queue is a chap whose shoes are blue. Standing in the ticket machine queue, a pigeon just flew in and went coo. As I continue my journey down... You the could wait around machine. writing rubbish poetry, or you could get train tickets straight to your phone and skip the queue. Now available in Cambridge from the Trainline app. Now available in Chelmsford from the Trainline app. Now available in Colchester from the Trainline app. Now available in Norwich from the Trainline app. Now available in Shenfield from the Trainline app. We don't record hundreds of 30 second spots. What you heard there was a 15 second portion with David Mitchell reading that intentionally horrible poem. And the second 15 seconds, determined by the location of the listener, they'll get a geo-specific message. You can already imagine the efficiencies here. Now, who are A Million Ads? A Million Ads is an ad tech platform based in the UK, and in order to do dynamic audio, you need someone like A Million Ads. A Million Ads can plug in to us, they can plug into Pandora, they can plug into iHeart in the UK, they do a lot of digital radio over there. Dynamic audio is not an exclusively Spotify thing. I'll show you some examples in a moment which uh, ran elsewhere. Um, and for the more technically inclined people in the room, a million ads can connect with any major DSP. This is a programmatic audio solution. The way that it works over here, you write a script based on different user and environment data points that you think are relevant to your product or service. It's then fed into a million ads dynamic creative uh, platform. And then as those users are identified through programmatic targeting, they are served those ads seamlessly. So that's how it works. The targeting depends on the publisher. With us, that's what our targeting looks like. In the UK, a million ads have run different creative that has people's names in it. Now, you can't do that with us. And I think if you could, we probably wouldn't recommend it. It's a little bit creepy. But the great thing about this is that it's, it's advertising where creative is in the forefront. Everything is about the message. One of the pitfalls of the separation of creative and media, as many of us will know, is that sometimes that very well thought out media plan will be serviced by an ad that is the same on every line. It, you know, it was live on time, but you didn't really take advantage of, uh, of what that planning was. The advantage here is that the creative absolutely is in sync with the target. So, let's listen to some examples. This is a campaign for Deliveroo from the UK. This is a million ads slide. And you can see there were 48,000 possible versions of this ad. Again, that's not making some poor VO record 48,000 30 second spots. It's segments of audio which are called in real time and stitched together. Listen to the spot and try to hear if you can, well, try to hear if you can hear where those segments are stitched together. Your friends are coming over for the match tonight, but you haven't had time to get any food in. You could do what you always do and grab something, anything. Or how about this? Deliveroo. You're thinking, what, Deliveroo on a weeknight? But just imagine, bibimbap and fried chicken from that Korean place you love and a couple of drinks to wash it down with. Sounds good, right? Deliveroo, the food you love delivered. Available now in Brighton. Search online and download the app. So, time of day, day of week, those two determine the product message. It's in the evening, curry, pizza, Korean. If it's the morning, bacon and egg roll, hangover, fruit. It changes based on the time of day, day of week, and then in addition to that, location. There are about a dozen different locations here which were called out, and I'll talk more about Geo 
in a moment. You'll notice the music bed, kind of bouncy. That's a really good kind of trick or, or workaround to get, get dynamics sounding really seamless. And you'll hear that more uh, in a later spot. So to look at an Australian campaign which actually had results, this was for Pepsi Max over 2017 summer. Pepsi Max uh, partnered with Time Out to bring live events to people across Australia, um, depending on where they were. This is what the spot sounded like. Very simple, almost the same as the train line. Kind of set it up and then recommend with Geo. Crack open your summer with Pepsi Max. It's time to stay up, play up, and max out. And the fun doesn't have to stop when the sun goes down. There's plenty of exciting stuff going on near you this evening. Why not check out Mardi Gras Film Festival? Head to timeout.com for all the details. So there are about 350 different events um, across major cities across Australia. At that point, Geo still kind of broad, and again, Geo will come up in a moment. And also that great Echo Beach track. Here were some results from the study which we ran, I think, with Nielsen. Um, brand consideration, perception, recall, all really strong uplift across these metrics. We haven't run a great deal of research uh, to date with the campaigns that we've done, but we've seen more and more of this. Anecdotally, the research results out of the UK, information which we can share from a million ads, consistently seeing higher uh, metrics like this when using Dynamic Creative against kind of standard audio. So another example which is live right now, this is for weeks. What will make this a perfect Tuesday morning? A great setting. You can't get better than beautiful Melbourne, can you? Some cracking weather. Well, this sunshine puts everyone in a good mood. And the irresistible combination of real Aussie mangoes and rich ice cream in a refreshing wee spa. Perfect. Now for a catchy tune to round it out. Wee Spas. Made in Australia with love and real fruit since 1957. So, location, weather, and product message. There are four variable product messages which could have been served up here. Um, 20,600 possible creative permutations for this campaign. Now, with a bit of luck, I'll be able to get this into the studio. What will make this a perfect Sunday evening? A great setting. You can't get better than beautiful Australia, can you? Some cracking weather. Well, this sunshine puts everyone in a good mood. And the irresistible combination of real Aussie mangoes, macadamia nuts, and rich ice cream in a refreshing wee spa. Perfect. Now for a catchy tune to round it out. Wee spas. Made in Australia with love and real fruit since 1957. So the default spot has run there because we're in Australia. And the point there is that with Geo, you're always going to serve out a message because you don't want to be so granular that no one's going to hear it. Um, if I can get this to work, I'll select... Uh, okay, Ballarat Central, why not? What will make this a perfect Monday morning? A great setting. You can't get better than beautiful Ballarat, can you? Some cracking weather. Well, the rain's good for the farmers. The sun will be back soon enough. And the irresistible combination of real Aussie mangoes, macadamia nuts, and rich ice cream in a refreshing wee spa. Perfect. Now for a catchy tune to round it out. Wee spas. Made in Australia with love and real fruit since 1957. Wee's is a bit of a miracle in terms of script writing, and I'm not just pandering to the client that's in the room. Um, because it attempts to fit a lot in up to four different variable messages there. As I'll say in a moment, we are recommending keeping it a bit simpler than that. This is what reporting looks like. Don't blink too hard. Each of these bands represents a different variable, and the width of the band is how many spots were served out. So if we use location as an example, <laughs> no surprises to see that at the top, Australia is the fattest band because it's got the greatest scale for potential delivery. And as we go down, we go down through New South Wales and Victoria and the States, and then we start to get into those more Ballarat, geo-specific locations. And that's, that's no big surprise. And you'll see down the bottom here, the bands are quite, quite narrow there. Um, predominantly good weather, et cetera, et cetera. Just a sample of the kind of metrics that AMA Studio will give you. The other thing to mention is you can optimize. Like any digital campaign, you can optimize creative based on uh, you know, strategically important locations, for instance. Um, as well as different products and things like that. 
This is a snapshot of who has worked with uh, Spotify at least in Dynamics since late 2016. Pizza Hut, uh, one of the very first, uh, they ran about a dozen different messages around lunchtime, offers which changed through 10 a.m. till say 2 p.m. in the afternoon throughout the course of the day. Um, and they also matched music bets, which I think is kind of a nice to have. It's not critical, but it is a nice to have. The idea that if someone's listening to pop music, you can call in a pop music bed. Does it make the spot a little bit more seamless? Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, Pepsi You Heard um, and others. So where to begin? So look for the easy efficiencies. Just having a call to action um, for different physical locations, if we're talking about the kind of bricks and mortar or franchise, car dealership, USL, whatever it is kind of business. Um, schedule and control different offers. So this is a bit of a gift for adult people. You can queue the time sensitive retail offer and then turn it on and resume your default creative without ever having to do anything beyond that initial trafficking. Product messages for times of day, it's a bit of a dumb one, but if you're a QSR and it's really hot, talk about frozen Coke at lunchtime. If it's cold, get the coffee, get the cake, whatever it is. It, it, it's a really great way of showcasing a, a diverse number of messages but in a super efficient way. And a little nice to have music beds, as we discussed. We have learned some things. Uh, don't overdo it. Two or three variables uh, is, is a sensible number to try to do. Don't force things like the weather. This is a bit of a bugbear. Our sales guys pitched this in, they're like, weather, and everyone's like, yeah, cool, weather. So we go into script writing, sometimes you figure out, don't do weather. Like, only do weather if it's hot, least bar, makes sense, right? Weather's not a fit for everything. And yeah, it's a big country. Weiss is the most uh, specific geo campaign we've run to date, and if we can share those results, there'll be some good learnings there about scale. We are realistic about scale. Um, in the UK, for instance, a million ads will target a street corner in, say, London or Birmingham or Manchester. They are, they've got the population, they've got a tiny country. They can do that. We're a long, long way from there now. How do you do it? Um, I heard it said recently at another presentation, looking at that big graph thing, like that would cost six million dollars to do a schedule like that. It doesn't. Um, it's, uh, it can just be in the low tens of thousands of dollars if you want to run a campaign with us. Um, it takes two to three weeks to produce, and it's not expensive. Um, dynamic production costs with AMA and others, they range anywhere from a couple of grand to you know, five, six, seven. Just depends on how many spots and messages you want to produce. Creative agencies have responded very strongly to this when we've spoken to them about it. Everyone wants to know how they can start writing for dynamic, how they can get into it. It's a great one for me, I just say, talk to a million ads, helps me. Um, but AMA can consult with creative agencies. Um, they also offer local production services as well. So the barrier to entry to this is not high. And, uh, and there are very good partners like Million Ads and us who can help you do it. So that's the dynamic. And it seemed like an opportunity to also talk about next practices in audio creative, some of which relate to this dynamic thing, um, but also which is more about that behavioral shift to people listening increasingly on their own with their headphones. So these are some things that we're seeing and some recommendations that we are talking to advertisers about now. The first one is audio brand guidelines and sonic branding. Best estimate from us, conversation with SCA the other week, 20% uh, of advertisers have audio specific brand guidelines. Brands have spent 100 years working on the visual brand guidelines, but those brands are being harder to seek. The efficacy of visual media is a constant debate, seconds constituting, constituting visibility. Audio brand guidelines are going to become really important when people can hear you but they can't see you. VB had a great, has a great jingle, Xbox, Intel, McDonald's, all brands that do sonic branding. We are seeing advertisers come over to this space more and more. This is about four weeks old now. This is MasterCard, play the jingle. just a snapshot of what is about a 90 second full composition and what, what they are doing is they're actually customizing it for different markets. It'll change culturally but it'll still have the same kind of inherent audio characteristics. It'll change at point of sale from other places. They're really, really digging in to this space. HSBC is another brand who in the last month has launched their, their first Sonic brand identifier. Use data. We've just talked a whole lot about data. Advertisers, agencies often say to us, we want to do that data-led creative, and they think of that, which is hard and time-consuming and involves lawyers. 
It doesn't have to be this complicated. Data field creative can be, do we know the gender of the person we're talking to and where they are? Do we know about if they are hot, are they cold, you know, is it seasonal, what time of the year are we at? Data can be simple, that's hard. Data lit creative uh, is much, much easier than, a, than what you may think. Second last one is understanding and producing their, for their environment. If we think about the silent disco, these are people who are listening on their own with headphones. Often when we talk to creative agencies, we say, you know, the person can hear the sound that you're putting down. Play with 3D audio, we've had that for a few years now. We're now hearing about binaural sound, the sensation of someone being in a room and movement. At, like, it's really, really advanced and really, really cool. Um, understand and produce their environment because people are in this one-to-one -one kind of listening moment and they can't hear the sound that you're putting down. And lastly, we think personalization is becoming more and more expected from the content that you get recommended through you know, algorithmic services like ours and others through to the advertising. People are more likely to screenshot an ad on Facebook being like, why did I get that erectile dysfunction ad, right? Because they think it's funny, but sometimes they're pissed off because they're like, this is supposed to know me but it, it doesn't. So personalization is becoming more and more expected, even in places where people would probably claim to find personalized ads uh, worse than good. So the last thing, I'm going to leave you with a uh, quote because it's a huge cliche. Uh, this is a quote from Daniel Ek, who's our CEO and founder, kind of talking about the audio landscape, our, our move towards podcasting and investment in audio. And he says, consumers spend roughly the same amount of time on video as they do on audio. Mm -hmm. Video is about a trillion dollar market and the music and radio industry is worth around a hundred billion dollars. He comes back to the same question, are our eyes really worth 10 times more than our ears? And I think from the research and probably talked about this morning, the answer is a resounding no.